Hello everyone and welcome back to the Matt Vidpro AI YouTube channel. If you saw my last video, you would have seen that OpenAI made some absolutely massive announcements at their Dev Day keynote. So I highly recommend checking out yesterday's video if you're not caught up on all of that, because today's video is sort of an update or a follow-up on some of their announcements. Oh, and by the way, if you want to stay up to date in the world of AI, I highly recommend you join my Discord server that's linked down in the description below. The community on there is just absolutely wonderful, and trust me, as soon as a big announcement is made, it's posted right in there. So first up, let's dive right into ChatGPT and all the changes that have been made there, actually testing them out for ourselves. As you can see, they've kind of redesigned the interface a little bit here. The icon is a little bit different. Submit icon is a little different as well. You no longer have that bar to switch between GPT 3.5 and GPT 4 with all the different GPT 4 options. Now it's just this little drop down toggle between GPT 3.5 and 4 and for any of your use cases it will automatically switch the models for you so you no longer have to worry about that. And this is of course the new GPT 4 turbo model and it should be the turbo 128k model if I'm not mistaken. So this model of course is going to generate a lot faster than the old GPT 4 model which honestly in my opinion was one of the main downsides of that model. It was so slow and OpenAI also claims this one is smarter as well. Pretty crazy stuff. Let's just see how fast this thing is right off the bat. Chat GPT, write me a story about a mountain goat who grew a lemon farm. Okay, submitted. And okay, it's pretty quick. I don't know if that's necessarily as fast as GPT 3.5. It's generating quicker than GPT 4 though, I would say. Also, you have to remember that this stuff was just announced, so all those servers are essentially being hammered right now. Okay, that's interesting. I just told it to tell me some fun goldfish facts, and it starts off by searching the web for goldfish facts as if it doesn't know any. But of course, I probably could have specified and said, from your memory, from your training, not just goldfish facts from the web. At any rate, you might notice that now when we hover over our original text message here to chat GPT, there's a little drawing icon. If I click on that, I can actually retype my prompt. So I could actually do that, say, from your memory, no web search. I can actually go ahead and save and resubmit that new prompt. So if I'm just kind of messing around trying to get the perfect prompt, I can go over and edit them over and over again instead of continuing the chat or making new chat GPT instances. So just an easy way to kind of swap through all of these things and work on a prompt over time, they'll be layered in these numbers. And if I switch back to one over here, you can see when I highlight over any of these annotations or citations, it'll actually give me a nice logo of the website that the link came from. And of course, you can click to go to that website. With everything being in the same exact place, I can say something like, take fact number five and make me a Dolly image with it. So now it can go ahead and create images with Dolly, also while it just searched the web. Everything's all in one place. It's less confusing and I don't have to make separate chats to do everything. I can just ask it to do something. OpenAI really seems to have a strong focus on making making ChatGPT as easy and simple to use as possible for anyone. And I really appreciate their focus on design. So there, I guess we got some sun tanning goldfish that it generated. That was pretty interesting. Of course, all the file uploading is right inside of your main ChatGPT4 as well. So I've been wanting to try this. We'll upload a photo and say, recreate this photo with Dolly. So it'll use GPT4 vision capabilities to understand the photo. And then in the same exact ChatGPT, use Dolly to make the image. Very, very exciting. There it goes. Okay, so it just says creating images. There was an error generating a response. Okay, but it says the it's still creating images. The bar is still loading. I'm just gonna click the regenerate button. Looks like the Dolly servers are getting squashed pretty hard right now. This has been a pretty major problem with the chat GPT in general. Just so many people trying to use it at once and it's difficult for their servers to keep up. I guess it's a good problem for them to have, but it's really annoying for us users paying 20 bucks a month. Okay, it did it. Okay, this is pretty good. It did a great job, honestly. This is an original Dolly 2 generation, by the way, which was one of my favorite Dolly 2 generations, and I think it did a really good job actually recreating it in like a Dolly 3 way. Anthropomorphic lemon character, green leaf on top, simple pop art style, glossy texture. Cool stuff. I love it. Very, very well done, actually. That works very well. And it's definitely a feature I'm going to be using, just dropping images in and trying to use it as inspiration for new Dolly 3 images. In fact, we could do a whole video about it if you guys are interested 
interested in me exploring that. So let me know down in the comments below if you'd watch that. And of course, we can actually upload text documents as well, which is a part of their old data analysis feature. So just tell me, what is this document about? By the way, this is the Wikipedia page for Squidward Tentacles. And as you can see, ChatGPT is reading documents. I just love it. All the capabilities in one place. I don't have to worry about it at all. Really, really nice to see. It's about time that they did something like this, the seamless model switching that seems to work pretty good so far. Okay, it read Squidward.txt. The document appears to be an article from Wikipedia detailing the character Squidward Tentacles from the animated television series SpongeBob. Well, that's accurate. And now it's telling us the various aspects that it covers. Again, wow, this generation's kind of slow right now because so many people are using this brand new GPT-4 Turbo model inside of ChatGPT. If you want to get a better idea for the speed of this new GPT-4 Turbo model, I'll do a little test in the OpenAI playground here, and this should give you a, a better idea of its actual speed click submit here and you can see this thing generates very very quick all of the servers are at least prioritized towards the playground or open ai api not necessarily chat gpt so yeah you can see this thing is not slow by any means even if it's a little bit slow inside of chat gpt all right let's go ahead and talk about some of the other features now they did change the way this sidebar works now it's in the middle instead of up towards the top but there's a lot of other things they changed if i go down to my account you'll see my plan my gpts the huge feature, probably the biggest feature that they announced in their keynote yesterday, custom instructions, and of course your typical settings. If you go to beta features, both plugins and advanced data analysis are still beta features that you have to swipe to enable. So I'd go into your beta features and see which ones you might not have enabled. Now the My GPTs section, this is going to be very exciting. OpenAI has a bunch of pre-made GPTs that we're going to explore in today's video. And of course at the top it says create a GPT, which is in beta. Customize a version of chat GPT for a specific purpose. As you can see, it's going to be available in the coming weeks. So as soon as I get availability to this, I will be making a video for you guys detailing how to create GPTs, hopefully some good tips and tricks on how to optimize that. So it looks like these first three here, Dolly, Data Analysis, and ChatGPT Classic are all essentially legacy versions of ChatGPT. So let's say I just wanted to use Dolly. I can make my own Dolly chat or my own Data Analysis chat or my own ChatGPT Classic chat, which has none of those Dolly or image recognition capabilities and then you have some of the more fun new ones like game time the negotiator creative writing coach cosmic dream tech support advisor which is a capybara of all things coloring book hero laundry buddy sous chef sticker whiz math mentor hot mods mocktail mixologist and gens for meme so these are all the ones made by OpenAI here of course the community is going to have this store at some point in the future maybe next month or so where everyone can upload their own GPTs and make their own and that's when things are really going to blossom but they've got some to kind of get our brains pumping on some ideas to create when we do get access to custom GPTs ourselves. Let's go ahead and start just with the Dolly one and see if they improved the base prompt surrounding Dolly 3 because the typical one that came with ChatGPT previously was not that great. Tell me the best ways to prompt Dolly. Be specific, okay. The more detailed your description, the better Dolly can understand and generate the image. Describe the composition, indicate where elements should be positioned, and the perspective of the image. Styles and influences, definitely important. Lighting, color palette, mood, atmosphere, time period or setting, analogies or metaphors. I don't know how I feel about using metaphors in my prompt. Uh, clarity over length. Okay, that's a good point. Uh, well, I mean, if this is all information that OpenAI has pumped into this thing, then clearly it's a little bit more advanced than the basic prompts that we saw when Dolly 3 was first introduced to ChatGPT. Uh, and check this out, we can actually keep it in sidebar now as a little pinned chat. So if I go back, does that just make a new one? Okay, yes, it does make a new one in that specific GPT. And then I have that specific chat. Let's go ahead and try one of these interesting creative ones. Game time. Quickly explain board games or card games to players of any age. All right, explain Monopoly to my five-year-old. Okay, this is, this is generating pretty quick. Super fun game. Pretend to be one of the richest people in town. 
down. Buy land if no one owns it. Roll dice. Numbers comes up with how many spaces you move. Fair enough. All the lands with the same color. Special cards that give you treats. The game keeps going around until one person has money left. They're the winner. This is a pretty simple, good explanation of Monopoly, I would say. Although I'm not sure that you need an entirely separate GPT for this task. Oh, they have the negotiator. Okay, this one's a little bit more nuanced and complex. You could tell ChatGPT to become a, a negotiator, but I have a feeling that this one's going to be a little bit more useful for having that GPT app. All right, I'm submitting my Squidward document again. Tell me how to negotiate with Squidward. Searching my knowledge. Okay, yes. Yeah. So when it says searching my knowledge like this, it's actually going into the files that it has uploaded itself. So the creator of this GPT uploaded their own PDF files or text documents for the negotiator to base off of. It appears you're asking for a negotiation strategy pertaining to a character from the animated series SpongeBob. All right, here is how we negotiate with Squidward, guys. We want to understand his interest. Squidward has a lot of love for the arts and aspires to be recognized as a talented musician. We need to remain calm in our negotiation because Squidward is short-tempered and impatient as well. We have to appeal to his intellect. He considers himself intellectually superior, so we have to uh, present our arguments with logic for Squidward. He has moments of vanity, so we can flatter him. Riz up Squidward a little bit there. Wow, if you guys ever run into Squidward... There's your, uh, negotiation tactics. Ooh, coloring book hero. Take any idea and turn it into a whimsical coloring book. Let's do a cute lemon character. There we go. We got a decent little coloring book image of a cute lemon dude. I think that is perfectly reasonable and serviceable. Obviously, you know, you're you're meant to do this not in MS Paint. You're really supposed to do this with probably some crayons. But, uh, you know, I think you get the gist of it. Make this character but as a watermelon. I'm going to upload the same image back into him. This is more just of a, a test of this new, like, model switcher than anything else. Okay, that worked pretty well. This looks very Cocomelon. I'd say it's, like, a very similar style to this guy right up here, so. So good job. Can this thing turn me into a coloring book page? Come on, I know you can do it, chat GPT. Uh, can't assist with that request. Oh, good lord. This isn't true. Submit feedback. All right, let's try the tech support advisor now. I'd like to consider myself fairly technically knowledgeable. Let's toss a pretty difficult problem at it. I just set up my new XLR microphone. Has this noise in the background. Ensure the XLR cables are properly connected. Make sure the gain isn't turned up too high. Okay, fair enough. Power source, if your mic requires phantom power, ensure that it is being adequately supplied. Electrical interference, keep the microphone and cables away from electrical devices. Power supplies, routers, or mobile phones. Connected to a computer using a different USB port might help. Using multiple devices might be creating a ground loop. These are all very, very good things to suggest for this very basic issue. Now, this electrical interference one is like a real problem that I had. I think that this tech support advisor GPT is pretty useful because you don't always want to have to pre-prompt your chat GPT for tech support, especially if you're a little bit less knowledgeable. This could be quite the lifesaver. Ooh, a die-cut sticker maker. All right, I'm going to upload a photo of my dog and have it converted into a die-cut sticker. Literally won't even prompt it. We'll just upload the photo. Look at this little menace to society. Okay, so here's the design it gave me. This is pretty good, but not that accurate to the original photo. So now I'm saying make it more accurate. Well, I think the colors are definitely a little bit more accurate. This one's kind of creepy though. <laughs> That's pretty cool though. It can take an image and make some pretty accurate stickers. Better than anything I could make on my own, right? Help you understand the lingo and the latest memes. Explain this meme. I uploaded a meme, but why is it funny? Let's go ahead and continue with our squ Squidward theme of this video and we'll upload a Squidward meme. Why is this funny? I don't get it. This is a pic of a small kind of plain looking house with a sign that says Squidward Community College slapped on it. Plus a little Squidward from Spongebob. The joke here is playing off the idea of a community college that's named after him. Imagine a whole school filled with Squidwards. Oh, uh, what the? That's a big yikes, but also kind of dead funny because it's so random and out of pocket. I don't know how I, I, I don't, I really don't even know what to say. Bad open AI, bad. Who would actually go there? If you know, you know, you know, if you're deep in the SpongeBob meme game, it's all about that ironic humor. This meme is low-key roasting those vibes and how Squidward would be like the dean of... Hulk University. I guess it is it is correct. I did a pretty good analyzation of like this meme. This is a pretty tough one to analyze too. It's Squidward Community College, guys. 
I'm pretty sure that this joke is just funny because it's a little absurd. I don't know about all of that. Alright, finally we'll end up with this mixologist. Let's toss some random ingredients in here. I have lemon juice, pineapple juice, vodka, an opened seltzer water, and a few starbursts. Oh, skip the vodka because it's not allowed to like promote alcohol. I mean, do we, do we really have to be that safe about things? You can't come up with an alcoholic drink? Well, the starburst is a garnish. I'm pretty sure they're going to sink to the bottom. So far, I'm really liking this new ChatGPT updated interface. It's a lot simpler and easy to use. This new GPT-4 turbo model is pretty awesome. I like its speed. It still seems to be very smart. And the whole new GPT's feature is shaping up to be pretty awesome. The ones that they gave you right off the bat, some of them are kind of useful, but I think the true genius is going to come out when the community gets access and can actually make their own GPTs. Then we'll see some actual useful ones. Like I said, get subscribed if you want to see me test this out further when we actually can make our own GPTs and share them to the store. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.